voice of the one I love, he's calling my name. And I hear the voice, the voice of the one I love, he's calling my name. He's saying, come on. Come up higher, my beloved. Oh, come up higher and leave this world behind. I find you to be beautiful. I am running, running after you. You become my soul. Friends and family, we are gathered here today in the presence of God with Michael and Carmen to share in the joy of their wedding. Christian marriage is a way of life given by God to the husband and the wife, which provides companionship, help, comfort, joy, and love. Marriage is not intended to be entered into lightly, but by God's word, we are commanded to hold it in honor all times. Who gives this woman to this man to be married? If you'd please join me in prayer, and you may be seated as well. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity we can come before you, this opportunity that family and friends were able to come and see and be a part of this incredible event for these two incredible people, where they have come to submit themselves to you and to each other. We thank you for the call that you've had on their lives, for the man and woman that you've called them to be, and for the couple that you equip and send out into the world. Father, we pray that you bless this service, bless Mike and Carmen, and these first steps in this next chapter of this incredible adventure that you called them to. It's in Jesus' most holy and powerful name we pray. Amen. Psalm 40, 1 through 5. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done and the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, 
they would be too many to declare. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In Proverbs 24, 3 through 4, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Mike Lynn Carmen, as I was saying right outside the door to Mike before we came in, it's truly an honor that you've allowed me to be here today. It has been so much fun to watch you two in the short time that I've known you, but I've been able to serve with you both in some capacity and how you guys are able to complement each other so well. From, like I told Mike, the awkward hugs that I forcibly give him and back to you singing how much you'll always love him as he slowly ate his pie last night. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for this honor and privilege to be here. Um, you've chosen some incredible scriptures that Amy just read that convey some amazing attributes of love and of marriage, how we need to act and how we need to respond. In Colossians, we, she said, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. In Proverbs, by, by wisdom a house is built, and through understanding is established, which we'll go into a little bit here shortly. But the one that I think describes a portion of marriage that we don't always talk about, Psalms describes it so well that one day you'll look back at this and be like, yes, that's what he was talking about. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slime and pit and out of the mud and mire. Now, I know I lost some people on that, and I maybe gained some extra listeners. But this moment here and now, it is amazing. You took absolutely incredible, your friends, your families here, the gifts, the love, it's truly amazing. And at this point, I'd like to point out, being with that, I, would, I was uh, somewhat of a contributing factor to these guys getting married. Um, some would say it was a smaller role, um, but, of course, I think it's a major role, and that's why I'm here today. Um, but in these amazing moments, as you look back, you'll be like, yes, Joe was right, he was there, it was beautiful, it was amazing. And in those moments where you were more frustrated with each other, you can thank Chad and Amy. So, <laughs> um, but in those moments, there are times in life where it is hard. Uh, marriage is a continual uh, battle at some points but incredibly rewarding. There may be a morning, an early morning, where you wake up, Carmen, where it's in the middle of the night still, it's dark, and you quietly get out of bed to not disturb, to, to not disturb Mike and head to the bathroom. You will keep the lights off because at that time of night, you don't like adjusting your eyes and, you know, it should be a simple task. And in that moment, you discover that your incredible husband did not close the toilet lid and you take an unexpected swim. <laughs> and in those moments, you do not think about how incredible he looks <laughs> or this amazing moment. These are the moments where you say, Chad and Amy. <laughs> Sometimes in this process, we don't talk about the future because of how amazing this moment is. But in 1 John, it conveys it so perfectly. God is love. We love because he first loved us. In John, 1 John 4, 7 through 12, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. 
Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. My oldest son knows how to work me over pretty good. He knows the right moments to know the right questions. One night, we put him to bed late, and he wasn't satisfied with that, so he decided to ask me a question. Dad, how do I know that I love God? I love you. I love mom. I love pizza. What is love? Looked at my watch and thought mom was going to be really upset, but I sat down, and over the next couple hours, we kind of dissected what love was. What is love? The Greek language, there are four words for love that we wrap everything up into I love a husband or wife, a son and daughter, or a favorite hot dish. It's the same word. But the word here is agape. For God used the word agape. Agape is called out of one's heart by the preciousness of the object loved. Agape, it is a love of esteem, of elevation. It has the idea of prizing. It's the noblest word for, the, for love in the Greek language. Agape is not kindled by the merit of worth of its object, but it originates from God's given nature because God is love. It delights in giving. This love keeps on loving even when the loved one is unresponsive, unkind, unlovable, unworthy, or leaves a toilet seat up. It is unconditional love. Agape desires only the good of the one loved. It is, it is all-consuming. Agape is something that we cannot do on our own accord. It requires experience from God because he is love. Remember in John 7, dear friends, let us agape one another for agape comes from God. It takes work. It takes commitment out of the realm of our own ability. And that's why I think it's so amazing that you guys chose the verse from Proverbs. By wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, it is established. It doesn't say by wisdom, you lie on the beach and be served, or by wisdom, you lay on the couch and wait for your spouse to serve you. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. Mike, you know how it is to build a house. Some days, work conditions are amazing. Working in your t-shirt, you get a whole bunch done, feeling good, you get a tan, feeling very accomplished. But then there are days that are frigid, and cold, and you can't feel your fingers. And you put 10 times the amount of effort, and you get an eighth done compared to the good day. But building a house takes work. It takes a team. Commitment, sacrifice, and determination. That's why I think it's so important that God says, husbands to agape the wives the way Christ agapes the church. It's sacrificial, it's passionate, and it's a pursuit of not our understanding. And it lifts others, connecting with a reconciled relationship with God. It's one where you honor the other and you don't think about yourselves. So love based on not our love, but the true agape love of God. So I challenge you guys, as you get up in the morning, spend time with God, pray, spend some time in the word, and ask God how you can honor each other today. And make that a challenge to out-honor each other. That every day it's a goal. Because the closer you draw to Christ and that agape love, the better you can love each other. And you guys have already showed that in your life thus far. So it, is incredible, it will be incredible to see what God does through the two of you that you guys could not do alone. Now would you guys please turn and face your beloved. We are now going to do the wedding vows. <clears throat> Michael, if you could repeat after me. I, Michael, take you, Carmen, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, 
in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish till death do us part. Now, Carmen, if you could repeat after me. I, Carmen, take you, Michael, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. As a sign and seal of the love you have for each other, you have um, decided to exchange rings. And this is the commitment of God. Um, you still have those? Excellent. And who's this? Which one? All right. All right. We're going to start with Mike, if you could, I'm guessing this one's Carmen, place this on her hand and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a token of my love and pledge. I give you this ring as a token of my love and pledge. And a pledge of my constant fidelity. <laughs> Carmen, put this on his hand and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a token of my love and as a pledge of my constant fidelity. Michael and Carmen, the two lighted candles symbolize your separate lives, your separate families, separate friends. The individual candle represents your individual lives before today, and lighting the center candle represents the two lives now joined to one light and represents the joining of family and friends in your life moving forward. And now to Kim. There must be a God I can see his love when I look at you and he must have a plan for this crazy life because he brought you here and placed you by my side and I have never been so sure of anything like I am in this moment here with you. Now for better or for worse are so much more than only words and I pray every day will be the proof that I mean what I say when I say stand by you in sickness and in health cause I have never been so sure of anything before like I am in this moment here with you and now for better or for worse are so much more than only words and I Take this ring 
like a beating heart I will live these words Till death do us part Cause I have never been so sure Of anything before Like I am in this moment here with you And now for better or for worse Or so much more than only words And I pray every day Michael and Carmen, you have come before the Lord and your family and friends to express your desire to be husband and wife. You have stated and declared your vows, exchanged rings, and you've shown your love and devotion to each other. Deuteronomy 6, 24 through 26 said, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show his favor and give you his peace. Michael and Carmen, it is my honor and privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you Mr. Michael Hansen. I'd like to thank you for coming and being a part of this amazing moment. Um, they have chosen to do a, a receiving line here, so the ushers will escort you out. So if you could please wait for the usher to escort the row out. They're going to take a couple moments, uh, specifically with some family, to take that. So if you guys could please be patient where you're sitting.